Hello and welcome to Awake and Bake. I'm your host, Chapati. And there's something important I've been noticing. People of all walks of life, at some point they fall sick or they get a disease or something in some way. And many times they go to a doctor and they get a, a prescription, a, a pharma drug, pharmaceutical drug, or some way to heal this problem. But I recently noticed for myself, and that's why I'm bringing it here to talk about, is I had some problem physical and I did some, my own uh, healing, self-healing on myself, and the problem went away. And it led me to think that the body has an enormous amount of healing power. It is remarkable what you can do for yourself and the body will take care of itself if you treat your body as some say as a temple. You treat it with beauty. So here we have very two special people to tell us a bit about it. One is a very, very good doctor, a Dr. Ruda Geosmas, who is a doctor of oriental medicine and a very skilled nurse practitioner who goes to hospitals and other medical institutions. Uh, wonderful lady, Mrs. Maria Makanchi. Welcome. Hello there. Very nice to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. So tell me, I'll ask you, Dr. Ruda, tell me a bit about oriental medicine and how it works with healing and getting physiology stronger. Well, like what you were saying before, the body is made to heal itself. Mm. I think people forget you know, you constantly hear, this is bad for you, that's bad for you. So a lot of people get frustrated, like, what am I supposed to do? But the body is made to heal itself. For example, if you scratch your cornea in 24 hours, if you patch the eye, the cornea heals itself. Just by that. you got to remember that. You yeah. don't necessarily have to go to a doctor or anything. Well, I mean, obviously, you should go to an ophthalmologist. Yes, yes. But the body is made to heal itself. Like, like we were talking about before, if you get a cut, the body will heal itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, if it's too big and it sutures, but... I found in my practice, I've been practicing almost 20 years now, is that a lot of patients, they hear so many things, raw diet, vegan diet, eat meat, don't eat meat. They're so confused and they really don't know what is good for themselves because everybody has a different type of body. So what I wanted to talk about today is just some basic ways that you can self-diagnose yourself and know what to eat. Of course, food is the most important thing. Food is our fuel. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, the American diet is not the healthiest diet. That's why we have the largest amount of obesity, not only in adults, but of course in children also. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to just base, just some basic Chinese medicine. In Chinese medicine, we use the tongue as a diagnosis. We don't use blood work because blood, the minute you go take blood at the doctor, if you've eaten a banana like 30 minutes before, your potassium levels will be sky high. Mm -hmm. It's not that accurate. The tongue gives us a nice indication of what's going inside our gut. It's all about the stomach. The tongue is an extension of the digestive system. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to teach everybody a little bit about tongue diagnosis. Can we look at your tongue? You don't do really? You want to see? <laughs> Let's take a look and do it kind of in a relaxed state. Okay, so very relaxed. We see that the tongue overall is pink. Pink is healthy. That's what we like. Now, it is a little elongated and it's a little on the pale side. Pale usually means that the body, you can relax now, has internal coldness. Mm. Somebody that's cold inside means they've eaten a lot of raw food, they've eaten a lot of either fruits, vegetables, salads. Mm -hmm. You're vegetarian, right? Vegetarian, yes. Do you eat always raw? Or no, do you eat no, some no. I, I cook food. I, I feel my body uh, needs warmth inside. Okay, so you prefer warmth. So that's what the tongue shows us. Yes. that you're cold inside because the tongue is pale. So, of course, you would prefer warm food. So, yes. more cooked foods would be better for you. Mm -hmm. You also have some cracks on your tongue. We don't like to see cracks. That is a weakness, you know, either in the heart or the digestive system. Not too deep and not too bad. Mm -hmm. And that means you need to rest a little bit more. You've probably been a hard worker most of your life. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at Maria's tongue now in a very relaxed state. Now again, Marie has a different kind of a tongue. It's a little bit swollen. It shouldn't really touch the edges. And hers is pink again. 
A little bit. She's a little bit on the pale side, too. Do you get cold easy? My hand freezing all the time. Yeah. And she doesn't have a coating. So that means her digestive system still needs a little bit of work. Because a healthy tongue. Support. Yeah. Eating better, you know, uh, chewing your food. That's another very important thing. Number en one. Enzymes. Enzymes, yes? Yes. Number one, chewing your food is very important. Because our mouth, when we masticate, when we chew, it produces enzymes. It mixes with the saliva, and that helps the food go down. You, a lot of people just chew one, two, three times, and then the food can get stuck. I know the saliva is very important first system for breaking down the food, is the saliva. That's right. Breaking. People forget yeah. chewing. Yeah. Okay, another very important thing is never drink with your meals. Have you heard that before? Very much so. Okay, again, it's because you want to allow the, they say you should chew your liquids and drink your food. <laughs> so that means by the time the food goes down, it should be almost liquefied. Mm. So the macrobiotics recommend 50 times each bite. Oh, that's a lot of chewing. Which, you know, a lot of people are not going to do it. I say if you can do 20 to 30, yes. you should chew, 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 so that you're almost bored. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Okay, and then you drink in between meals. Again, you don't want to wash down the food that's barely chewed down into your digestive system. That but, puts a strain. But, right. The basic <laughs> concept is to remember is that you do not want to dilute the digestive enzymes yes. that your body has created through the saliva to assist in um, digestion. And you but also want to get assimilation and you also want to be able to absorb your nutrients. Okay, I want to go take a break okay. so we can come back and talk more on this very interesting subject you're okay. bringing out. I'm your host, Chapati. Stay with us. It's Awake and Bake. We'll be right back.